So with all of the excitement, all the hype, and everybody clamoring around the Laval Rocket. In fact, it's not even just the Laval Rocket. There's a game later today between the BU Terriers and the BC Eagles that will be taking place for the Eastern Conference Finals in the NCAA. And this game is going to have a lot of Montreal Canadiens fans paying attention to it too because you've got two Canadiens prospects battling it out on both sides of the fence here. But with all Laval, Prospect, NCAA talk aside, I wanted to shift our conversation to a little bit of a talk on some of the players that are already on the team. Now, we've made our fair share of videos talking about Nick Suzuki. Over the years, we've talked about Cole Caulfield. This year, we've talked about Josh Waugh and a lot of other things around that. But I wanted to go over one of the most underrated defenseman prospects of the past few years who has really broken onto the Canadian scene in a great way. And how, a few nights ago against the Vancouver Canucks, you could say this might have been the biggest wake-up call that this player had received in a long time. You know from the title, you know from the thumbnail, today we are talking about Caden Gooley. Now, before we dive into why exactly I'm making this video, let's give the guy his props. Just be cool about it, just say, hey, this is what he's doing so far, because Caden Gooley legitimately has done some very good things, and I think that shouldn't go unnoticed. He's 22 years old, January 2002 is the birth date, 6'2", 205 left-handed guy, drafted by the Canadians in the 16th overall spot in the 2020 draft. This was a pretty big deal, because the Canadians were still in their quote-unquote Rebuild phase, they were going through this transitory period, they had drafted Kotkaniemi in 2018, they got Cole Caulfield in 2019, and in 2020, they miraculously made the playoffs that year because it was the COVID bubble year and they squeaked in by beating the Penguins in the play-in series and it was a really big deal that they were able to actually do that. But because they ended up making the playoffs, their draft pick ended up dropping from what would have been somewhere in the top 10 all the way to 16th overall, where the Canadians selected Gooley, despite the fact that there were other, let's just say French Canadian guys available, like Hendrix Lapierre, a few others. Hey, Justin Barron is there too, so nice to see that. Jakob Perot also happens to be here, who is now a Montreal Canadiens prospect since he was acquired by them at a trade. But long story short, Caden Gooley was a guy that, I'm going to admit, was seen as a little bit of a reach back then. And you could see this in my face when we made the reaction video to when Gooley was initially drafted by the Canadians. But even if you go over to the draft projections, hey, guess what? Elite Prospects had him at 20, Future Considerations at 25, Button had him at 23. But there were some outlets that were a little bit higher on him, like McKean's and Bob McKenzie, who had him at 14 each. So the fact that Gooley went in this range, surprising the sum, a little bit less to others. But the Canadians went with a guy that, at the time of the draft, he was being compared to guys like Colton Pareko. He's a big, solid frame. He's a defender. He can play well in his own zone. That's really the bread and butter that Gooley had in his profile. But as the years went on, Gooley actually showed off a little bit more than just being a defensive player because as his career with the Raiders went on and eventually the Edmonton Oil Kings, you started to see a lot more versatility there offensively as well. Not only was he scoring points, but he also happened to still sustain the crazy good defensive work ethic and just ability to break up plays and make good forward passes. His transition game was exquisite, and it was one of these things where you didn't really see much of this when he was draft eligible. It only started to come out a few years after the draft. And for the Canadians, they took advantage of that. They used him last year, 44 games played, 18 points. This season, he's got 16 points and 65 games played. So unfortunately, his points actually did decrease from last year to this year. But I think a lot of people can acknowledge that when it comes to just everything that Caden Gooley brings, he has been a little bit better this season in terms of his overall comfort on the blue line. And really, Caden Gooley wasn't drafted in the first place because they wanted him to become a super amazing number one point producing defenseman. Like, the role that Mike Matheson has right now, that's not really what Gooley was drafted for. He's been averaging more time on ice per game this season than last, which is really all you want out of this player, because as a defensively minded rock whose presence just calms the rest of the team down, that's all you really need. And as he gets older, you know, we'll see what Gooley is at 23, 25, 27 years old. For now, though, he's all right, but there is room to grow a little bit more. 
And this is why I wanted to make this video in the first place, because the other day there was an article on tvasports.ca that talks about the Canadians and the Canucks game that took place Thursday night. This article was published on Friday, 7.30 p.m., and the title is this. Caden Gooley was massacred. Now, of course, Caden Gooley is still alive. Doesn't take a genius to figure that out. But when it comes to the way this TVA Sports article and the analysts on the program talk about Caden Gooley from Thursday night's Vancouver game, it says, hey, Caden Gooley had a very difficult game against the Canucks. Not because he played badly. On the contrary, Gooley is, night after night, one of the good elements on the team. But Caden Gooley paid the price physically in Vancouver, being hit from all sides in several ways several times. Vancouver got us used to a style of play that was not very physical in recent years, recalled columnist and host Tony Marinero on Friday on the JIC show before emphasizing that things have obviously changed, since the Canucks applied 42 hits against the Canadians. The Habs paid the price on a physical level, he said. Kid and Gooley was massacred last night. He was shaken like that, and that can't be. Vasily Podkolzin had, I think, six hits. Pia Sutar had four. The rest of the article then goes over a few extra names on the Canadians from that night and how some of these guys are trying, some of these guys aren't. It's whatever, you know, Gallagher's good, Anderson's bad. Similar things that we have heard over and over again. But when it comes to Caden Gooley and his game against Vancouver, I feel like even in the post-game video that we made the other day after that game concluded, I kind of said when it came to that Connor Garland 3-0 goal at the end of the second period, that really was a bad showcase for Caden Gooley because he got beat twice. The pass was going over to him in the offensive zone, blue line to blue line, and Gooley misses the pass. The puck deflects off the boards. Teddy Bluger gets there first. Gooley comes back checking because, you know, he's the defenseman. He has to check his guy. And Bluger is able to send a pass right through the stick of Gooley onto the stick of Connor Garland, who comes and shoots and scores. So Gooley not only got toasted on that one play, which resulted in a three-goal lead for Vancouver, but also throughout the night, he was getting pummeled. The Vancouver Canucks and Rick Tockett, they have this very particular style, especially in tight games where they just go out there and physically wear down their opponents. You'll see guys like Pod Colson with five, six hits a night and extra guys getting into the fray as well. So for Caden Gooley to be on the receiving end of that, obviously it's easy to say, oh yeah, but Caden Gooley can just do that himself. He's 6'2", right? 200 plus pound defenseman, he should be able to do that. Well, that's the thing. Caden Gooley is a big dude. But he doesn't really play much like a big dude, quote unquote. Like, he blocks shots and he maybe gets like one to two hits a game, but on some nights where the Canadians are just getting completely pummeled physically, when they're getting 30, 40 hits against in a game, and Caden Gooley is getting rocked once or twice every few shifts, it's kind of overwhelming. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you kind of have to learn to be able to stay on your feet and stay on your ground. Maybe get a little bit more physical here and there. Not that he hasn't been doing that, it's just there's room in some situations to do that more. So for Caden Gooley, I mean, you could say it's just one game. That's totally true. Gooley has been fine the rest of the season, but I did find it interesting that the JIC folks on TVA Sports went out there and pretty much labeled an entire segment to Caden Gooley, saying that the guy got massacred in Vancouver and that preventative measures will need to be put in place in order for him to combat that kind of style next time. And hey, you know, better to learn these things when you're 22 rather than when you're 28 or 29, because these are still the formative years. You're still able to grow, you're still able to adjust, you're still able to get new habits. And as you play and progress into the player that you can be, I mean, lessons like these and let's just say throwaway losses against teams like the Vancouver Canucks in 23-24, this is going to be fine. Like, nobody's going to know about this game years down the line, but the lessons you'll get from it... Hey, if Caden Gooley can be a bit more physical as his career goes on, and this game is one of the realizations that he has had to get there, then, hey, I think the Canucks did a pretty good job. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below when it comes to Caden Gooley, his physical play, and how he got destroyed, massacred potentially even, against the Vancouver Canucks on Thursday. This was a pretty big lesson in my opinion, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what you think about Ghoulie and this situation. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.